Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. In this video, I want to address all of those people who I would classify as John and Paul bashers. Now, attacking or bashing the Apostle Paul is certainly not a new thing. It goes back to the very earliest days of our church history. The Apostle Paul, in uh, the first chapter of the book of Galatians, <clears throat> addresses it where he defends his status as an apostle, and he defends his message of salvation through faith alone. So there have been uh, people who want to attack the Apostle Paul for a long time, and it still goes on today. And then many people come to the Apostle Paul's defense. And some people not only defend Paul, his right as an apostle, and his message, but they go all the way to the other extreme and want to give Paul the status of the only apostle that has the truth for our salvation. Some of these people are claiming that you cannot get saved by reading the book of John. So they, in their own way, are extremists. And uh, they are uh, bashing the Apostle John. <sighs> these people I would refer to as... <clears throat> Uh, hyper-dispensationalists, uh, and some people don't like that term, but I can certainly refer to them as paul only -ists. They believe that only Paul has the message of our salvation, and that we can only get saved by reading the writings of Paul. Some are so extreme that they even believe that you can only be saved in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, and in verses 3 and 4. That is so narrow-minded and extreme, it just boggles my mind. So, there are Paul bashers, and then there are John bashers. But today, uh, I'm going to compare the teachings of the Apostle John and the teachings of the Apostle Paul. And I'm going to show you today that they both have the same message for our salvation. Let's start with the Apostle John. I would define the Apostle John as a teacher of what's commonly today called easy believism. That's right. The Apostle John said, it's easy to be saved. It's easy to receive eternal life simply by believing in Jesus Christ. Throughout the book of John, it says, believe and receive life everlasting. I'm going to cite a few of these verses right now to make the point. Let's go to John 20, 20, 31. In this verse, it tells us the purpose of John writing the book of John. This is the only book of the Bible that declares the purpose of its writing is so that we can have everlasting life. So if you want to know how to receive salvation, if you want to know how to receive eternal life, John claims that his book is written specifically for that purpose. Let's go to John chapter 20, verse 31. It says, But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life 
through his name. So we here have the Apostle John declaring the reason this book was written is so that we can have life everlasting through the name of Jesus Christ by believing in Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God. Next, let's look at John chapter 6, verse 69. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. And in John 11, verse 25 through 27, this is the scene where Jesus is at the tomb of Lazarus before he raises Lazarus from the dead. And he's talking to uh, Mary, the mother of Lazarus. I'm sorry, Mary, the sister of Lazarus. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And Mary answered, She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. So here we have Jesus giving the message of receiving eternal life by believing in him for it. And Mary confesses her faith that Jesus is the Christ and she receives life everlasting because of her faith in him. Next we'll look at John chapter 16 verse 47. He says, this is Jesus speaking. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. That's pretty simple. Even in the old-fashioned King James language, I think anybody can understand that. Anybody who believes on Jesus has everlasting life. Now let's go to John 3.16 and 18. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So here we have it declared that when we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we receive everlasting life. If we don't believe in Jesus Christ for everlasting life, then we don't get it. Now let's look at John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So here it declares that those people who believe on the name of Jesus Christ they become the sons of God. They become a child of God. They're born again as a child of God. They have everlasting life because they believed on the name of Jesus Christ and therefore they received eternal life. Let's look at John 3.36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Again, this verse is teaching the easy believism. 
He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. To have everlasting life, all that's required is to believe on the Son of God. If you want everlasting life, believe that Jesus Christ has the, uh, the power, the ability to give it to you, and he will. You will receive everlasting life when you put your faith in Jesus Christ to receive it. If you believe it, you receive it. Altogether, in the book of John, the word believe in some form is used 99 times. Now, interesting for those people who believe that uh, more is required than believing, and they say that you must repent of your sins. In the book of John, it says the purpose of the book was it was written so that we will have everlasting life, so that we'll know how to receive everlasting life. So if repenting of our sins was a requirement to receive everlasting life, it should certainly be throughout the book of John. We see the word believe 99 times. Now, how many times do you think we see the word repent in the Gospel of John? Zero times. 99 times John says, believe, believe, believe. Zero times he says, repent. So the Gospel of John teaches easy believism. Now let's compare that to the, what the Apostle Paul taught. The Apostle Paul also taught easy believism for eternal life, for salvation. He taught simply believe and receive life. That's the first example. We're going to go to the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 30 and 31. The Apostle Paul was asked this question. What must I do to be saved? He answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Now, you notice the Apostle Paul did not say, Repent of your sins. The Apostle Paul did not say, uh, Join a religion. The Apostle Paul did not say, Become a religious person, or do religious rituals. He simply said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe. He teaches easy believism for salvation. But Paul, even though he taught simply believe in faith alone, he had another burden. Because early in Christianity, the message of salvation was being attacked and distorted. So Paul had the added responsibility of refuting and rebuking the false teaching that had infiltrated the early church. You had Jews who did not want to give up their Judaism. They wanted to hold on to the laws and commandments and the rituals. And they wanted to incorporate that and make that part of Christianity. Paul calls them Judaizers, legalists, um, foolish Galatians in the book of Galatians. So even though Paul taught simply believe and receive eternal life, he had to fight against these religious zealots that were changing the message for our salvation. Let's look at Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. Paul says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert 
the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So Paul had to not only teach the simplicity of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, but he had to fight against those who were trying to change the message and add in some kind of religious works as a requirement for salvation. So here he's telling the Galatians, the church that he had started, he gave them the true message of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. And he has to get back to them because people had infiltrated the church and were perverting the message into a false message. And he said, if anyone, even an angel, tells you any other message for salvation, then they're cursed. Now, let's go to the book of Ephesians. Uh, Paul is also having to deal with the people who want to require more than simply believing on Jesus Christ for salvation. So in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, why would he have to say that? Why would he have to say that it's not of works and that it is a gift? He had to do that because people were, had infiltrated the church and were telling the people more was required than simply believe on Jesus and receive eternal life. So he had to denounce them and tell them that we're saved by grace through faith. John didn't have to say we're saved by faith alone because it wasn't disputed. He just simply presented the message Believe on in Jesus Christ and receive eternal life. When Paul said that, he had people wanted to argue against that and say more is required. So he had to rebuke them and refute that false teaching. So he said, no, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. He had to clarify that salvation is a gift. It's free. And we receive it through faith. Let's go to Romans chapter 3, verse 28. Also, Paul has to clarify that salvation is through faith alone. Easy believism. And it's believing and nothing more. Paul says, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now, we could rephrase that and simply say it's justified by faith alone. No, following the law is required. Faith alone. And then in Romans 4, 5, Paul says, To him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So again, Paul is saying faith alone is required to receive everlasting life. But he has to elaborate further and say that even if someone does no religious work at all, they do not follow one commandment. They do not do one religious ritual. They've never done one work, religious work in their life, and they never will. It says, to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. That's Jesus Christ. To him that believeth on Jesus Christ, his faith in Jesus 
is counted for righteousness. That's clearly saying we're, we're saved by faith alone. So let me conclude that the message for our salvation as presented by the Apostle John and the Apostle Paul is the same. It is simply believe on Jesus Christ for life everlasting. But Paul had the added burden, the responsibility of refuting and rebuking the false teachings that had infiltrated the early church. Now, Paul Bashers have been around for, you know, almost 2,000 years now. And they are, they are wrong. They should believe the Apostle Paul. But some of these people have embraced Paul and excluded, excluded everyone else. And that's equally as wrong. Sadly, John bashing is, is coming from these Paul onlys. So my advice to any new believer, if you just became a Christian, if you just put your faith in Jesus to receive eternal life in heaven, my advice is read the Gospel of John 100 times. Read it over and over and over again so that it becomes so ingrained in your mind, your soul, your heart. Easy believism. All that is required is to believe in Jesus Christ to receive eternal life, and he is faithful. Believe that he has the power to give you eternal life. He is able and he is faithful. He will give it to you. He will keep his promise. He promised to give everlasting life to everyone who comes to him to receive it. So read the Gospel of John over and over and over again. After you've done that, then I would recommend that you also read the book of Romans and Galatians and Ephesians 100 times because that will certainly clarify to you that not only are we saved by faith alone, by simply believing Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is the giver of life everlasting to all who come to him to receive it. But it will also exclude any other requirements. Paul clarifies better than anyone else that it's not only say salvation through faith in Jesus, but it's faith alone, no other requirements. Well, I hope this is helpful to some of you. And I am, uh, I've been discouraged by the fact that there are uh, some people who will actually say that no one can get saved by reading the book of John. To me, that's shameful. Well, praise the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.